By carrying out qualitative research, we were able to identify some themes, which indicated that we needed to focus in towards a more specific area and go from a very broad challenge question at the outset to a more specific area of well-being in the university and how it can be improved. For students who have left a fairly protected environment at school and have started their new journey into adult life at university can often leave them feeling daunted in raising concerns and issues in an unfamiliar setting. The use of qualitative research provides a much more flexible approach. Comparatively, a downside to this is that the data you are receiving may be artificially constructed around the questions being asked towards the participant. We talked to Chief Technology Officer Kieran Innes over at Stribe HQ to seek his views in this area. We went on this journey of we need to come up with a new brand that encapsulate kind of listening to your employees and encapsulates building happier and better teams. Because ultimately, we've seen all of the stats in the world show that if you've got a more engaged workforce, if you've got a more educated workforce, and you've got a workforce that feels that they have psychological safety in which they can speak up about any ideas, suggestions, or whatever, mm -hmm. and not feel that it will fall on deaf ears. If you have them three things in your organization, you end up with a very productive organization. All of the benefits are unbelievable, particularly monetarily and in a capitalist society. That's important. The term psychological safety was discussed. This relates to creating a protected environment for people to voice their feelings or concerns without fear of negative repercussions. We needed to be mindful of the evidential strength of using an expert interview for our research, because using an expert in the field may provide us with very biased information rather than related to the broader human-centered method of design. By utilizing an iterative, interrogative technique, the five whys, we were able to retrieve more applicable answers compared to the card sort. However, we only included four people within the focus group, so we had to take this into consideration. What we gathered from the focus groups is that a fast response makes the difference when it comes to supporting well-being. Participant information and agreement documents were filled out for the expert interview, focus group and card sort, all of which can be found within the phase one folder. One tool for creating ideas is a card sort. We only used five people in this research method instead of a larger data pool and risked receiving biased data. The card sort led us to start thinking about a prototype as an ideation tool that could be used in ensuring anonymity when seeking support. A way to ensure student anonymity as opposed to using face-to-face -face or personal email methods the use of a mobile application could be an option. Therefore, our next thought was to create an initial prototype mobile app, which we allowed the card sort participants to review and feedback on its usability. The card sort method, along with the focus group, provided us with a more personalized approach to this aspect of human-centered design. We used two personas for our research, James Andrews and Isabel Featherstone. Creating character diamonds give us an insight into strengths and weaknesses each persona possesses. Our empathy maps give a view on how our two personas think, feel, do and say about the current well-being services that Napier already provide. The use of persona-based empathy maps can be beneficial at the initial ideation stage, however, the data collected is fictional so may differ from real-life responses. This can be specifically be a problem when gathering initial data as it can sometimes be inaccurate. Our objective was to identify any commonly recurring themes that might assist us in the modelling of our final designs. Having undertaken this broad-ranging analysis, the key findings in terms of human-centred design, to name a few, are responsiveness, anonymity, and service, relating to comprehensive key information, to be specific. From all our considerations, we took forward the three most prominent insights, namely psychological safety, responsiveness, as well as anonymity. Our research has shown that anonymity is the most important requirement for people when it comes to seeking support. This contributed towards the ideation of a few of our final designs. One way of improving our initial prototype was by adding subtitles for each part of the app. This was a key insight taken from the card sort participants. A chatbot feature could be implemented inside the mobile app. However, from our responses, we gather that human interaction is more beneficial, yet it is still a feature that we would like to explore. We also want wanted to add a feature that allows the user to have control over who can see their identity. The feature will be a way of allowing students to safely speak with the university leaders and managers, which could be another avenue that students could access, allowing for anonymity compared to that of emails and face-to-face -face conversation. Our weekly check-in feature would include an emotion tracker, which would consist of three weekly questions based around well-being. 